Hi, I'm Rich. I'm Sandy. Welcome to the show. Today we are in South Africa. We're in the Eastern Cape and we are hunting with our friends at Wild Horizon. This property we're on uh, has, I don't know how many mountains. Lots. It's gigantic. <laughs> There's all kinds of critters here, but we're really hoping to find a nice red hardy beast and uh, an impala today. Yeah. Yeah, we're really uh, expecting some really good opportunities out here. So uh, come on along. Hi, I'm Rich, and if anybody can lay claim to having been born into the life, it's me. Born and raised in northern Alberta, I was an adult off to the big city trying to woo a certain blonde bombshell before I ever ate any farm-raised beef. And I'm Sandy, and I might just be that blonde that corrupted this boy. Rich and I met and were married in a whirlwind romance that saw a moose hunt classified as a honeymoon. But two weeks into the marriage, I realized if I was gonna know this boy, I better get with the program. And get with the program she did. Sandy jumped in with both feet and wholeheartedly embraced the outdoor life. She took to hunting, trapping, and fishing like a duck to water and quickly became the ultimate partner. I never had to explain that I was late because I got stuck in a mud hole. <laughs> well, that's because I was pulling the winch line. That's why they called me the winch wind. <laughs> and you're very good at it. I am. And there was no worry about what time of day I shot a moose, because he was right there helping me gut it. We were full partners in life, and soon we had three kids running around the house, eating what we hunted, and teaching them the outdoor life. Lord, could they eat. Oh yeah, and they still can. <laughs> Family Christmas pictures usually involved our critters and camo, and now we have seven grandkids to show the hunter's path to. Our outdoor life together was easy, hunting and fishing and trapping in our northern Alberta backyard. Today, our hard work and blessed life allows us to adventure and hunt far-flung and exotic places throughout the world. The outdoors has always been the bedrock of our relationship. We've laughed and loved and adventured our way through our 40 years of life together. 40 years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that doesn't seem real. No. I'm Rich. And I'm Sandy. And we're married to the hunt. So Red Heart of the Beast. Yes. When I hunted Red Heart of the Beast, it was the hardest hunt ever. <laughs> and Clint and couldn't figure it out, and it was like he, we hunted for a couple of, three days or something, and it was just ridiculous. He had a plan, though, this time. We yes. were We were going to hit a, a friend of his place on the way back to the Kalahari. Correct. Like, it's a 12-hour drive up to the Kalahari, and you course drive drive through a lot of country and that so we were going to hit this place on the way back and it was lousy oh yeah what was the term what was the term lousy or or there was frightful amount of of red hardy said yeah <laughs> Well, it didn't take very many minutes, and Clint was looking like a genius. Oh, yeah. There was lots of them. There really were. No, well, I don't know, eight, eight or a dozen or something. It was hard to tell. They were down at this water hole. There were some zebras there. Yeah. And we sat on them for forever. Yes. And, you know, we even looked at, you know, those nice big impalas over further and stuff like that. And, but we sat on them forever and, and just hoping that they would get up and come our way.
We've got a herd of hardy beasts here 300 yards away. We know there's four or five here. We're not sure how many exactly. We've been sitting waiting them out and now we've been sitting for just about four hours. We see other animals starting to stir around and, and starting to get up and moving. Maybe we'll get a chance at them yet. We're hoping they get up at the water hole and they come our way. But you never know, right? And they got up all right, but they didn't come our way. <laughs> they went the other way. And see, that's, you know, once again, it's, you're dealing in all of these, you know, normal normalities, right? Yeah. Where normally they would get up and they would, they would move their way down out into the open to feed. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's what normal animals do. But when we show up, suddenly the patterns change. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's always fun and it's never predictable. Let's say that. They got up, they left the water hole, and they went up over the shoulder of a mountain. Yeah. And we're headed actually back towards where, where we uh, the left the vehicle. Married to the Hunt is brought to you by these fine sponsors. At Old Smoke's Coffee, we slow roast our coffee over a wood fire, making it smooth and memorable. You can order our coffee online. Old Smoke's Coffee, coffee crafted for the courageous. Range Road Enterprises understands hard work. Our products work as hard as you do. See our full line of firewood processors, sawmills, and more at your nearest dealer. Why trust your hunt to anything less than the best? Carl Zeiss Sport Optics, confidence in the toughest conditions. High quality hunting and spectacular trophies create memories of a lifetime. Let Guy Swart from Wild Horizon help you plan your next African safari. So we ended up hiking away out and around and trying to <laughs> try to catch up to them. But I mean, we were scrambling and basically yeah. we, we almost ended up chasing them down the road. Yeah. Yeah. And then it was just, there was a nice, nice bull in there when they went running across the road. Yeah. But... <laughs> it was a nice bull in there. Anyway, that's the way it goes. It just, it, and I, and I guess I would just say that that's how we know it's real hunting. I mean, you're not, there's no shooting a fish in a barrel kind of thing here, right? No. I guess the, the high spot of, uh, you know, walking back to the, the vehicle with our lip dragging in the dust was, <laughs> <laughs> was the mountain reed bucket. Oh, yeah. Well, we, um, there was a couple of them there. But they they blend right in. Oh, they oh, disappear. Di they disappear, and it was a really dandy buck. Yeah, buck. And yeah. Clint was not happy with me because I wouldn't <laughs> shoot. <laughs> but we were hunting red hartebeests, so that's what we were hunting. And and you know we've talked before about the list and that kind of thing. And but but the mountain reed buck wasn't on the list, not this time anyway. Exactly. All right, you may wonder why I'm sitting here with one boot off. <laughs> this is a, a tip that, that have to get, might get you out of a jam. We were uh, hunting here two days ago. I go to load the gun, and all of a sudden it won't close. Bullet goes in, and the, the, the bolt won't drop. And I'm wondering what's going on. So I ejected, thinking that perhaps it's a, a, you know, a bad round. And it, Next one does the same thing, so it's not a bad round. And now I've cycled all of these through the, the uh, gun before I brought it to, to Africa. So I got looking at it. What had happened is I had a seed that had went down my barrel and was on the bolt face. And of course that made up enough difference, you know, with the custom chamber and uh, everything fits nice and tight. Uh, that made up enough difference that it, it, it wouldn't allow it to, to turn and rotate. So I scraped the crushed seed off it there, but then I'm worried. Now I'm worried about, is there something else in the barrel? And I, stupidly, like, I mean, in North America, I constantly have a piece of tape on the, over the end of this to stop uh, those situations. So what do you do when you're out in Africa and you, and you don't have a cleaning kit with you or anything? You take your boot off and you take the lace and you take and feed it through. And the beauty of it is, is that you can tie a knot in it to make, make up the difference for the, for the cartridge of the caliber, right? For the caliber, not for the cartridge.
Takes a little bit of. It's like pushing a rope uphill. Well, that's exactly <laughs> what you're doing, but out, out it comes there. See? Now, you take a pull, and I've got to the point, I've just tied in a single overhand knot, and I take and pull it, and you can feel it, 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 it feels nice and tight. If you have a very large bore, you might need a double overhand knot. This is just a 308, and you can hear. It's, it's pulling tight. It's not doing a good job of cleaning, but it'll get rid of any, any foreign debris or any, any uh, seeds, that kind of thing. Quick peek through it afterwards. Yeah, nice and clean. So then I finish it off with a piece of, of tape over the top here. Toss me that tape, Sand. Real simple. Black tape goes over the end. Big argument always is, does it affect where, where your gun hits? No. Because what's going on is you have all of this air that's in here in front of your, your bullet. When your bullet enters, this air gets compressed until the air actually blows out your the piece of tape. And, the, and it's not there when the bullet gets there. That simple. This little something that might get you out of a jam someplace far off like Africa. Of course, going to Africa involves a lot of planning and we get a lot of questions around that planning. Probably the, one of the major ones has got to be about what cartridge should I take? You know, people want to know what rifle, oh, invariably it's going to be a bolt action. And they want to know then the caliber. Well, caliber is not the correct way to go because it's actually the cartridge. You can have everything from a, from a, a 30-30 to a, a 300 Ultra Mag. They're all the same caliber, not the same cartridge, not by a long shot. When we went the first time, now every, <laughs> every PH is going to tell you you need to bring a minimum. Your small gun should be a 375 H&H. Uh, or, or the 375 Ruger, it's becoming more popular as well. That's what they're going to want you to bring as, a small, as your, your small gun. And I would say, you know what, if you're going to shoot something like an Elan or a Cape Buff, yeah, you're going to want something like a 375 H&H. The first time that we went, uh, we took uh, the 338 Win Mag and the 7 uh, Winchester Short Mag as the, our, our guns of choice. The second time that we went, we took the 375 H&H and we took the 338 Win Mag again. This last time, we took the 308 and the 260 Ackley. Now, the 260 Ackley is based off of the 308 cartridge, and it was the 6.5 Creedmoor before the 6.5 Creedmoor was popular, or cool. <laughs> and the, the reasons for going with it with the smaller cartridges was just the fact that people shoot them a lot better. I shoot them a lot better. I, I have, you know, my 375 H&H is a, is a heavy gun. It's 10, 11 pounds. But it, I don't shoot it as well as I, as I shoot the, the 308 or the 260. The recoil is a big deal. You want to take what you can shoot and what you can shoot well. African game has its vitals in a different place, yes. You have to shoot more forward than you would. So most often you're going to be shooting through, a, through the, the leg or, the, or, or the, the bottom part of the shoulder. But other than that, they're not bulletproof. And we killed everything this last time using a 6.5 and a, and a 308 Winchester, literally, and did a great job. You know, if you're going to be going for something large, like the Elan or the Buffalo, uh, those, those kind of animals, dangerous game, then yes, I would go up to the, the, the 375. Uh, I would uh, not otherwise hesitate. Sandy took a Kudu with the 308. Uh, she took a big zebra with the 308. I, I shot everything, big Oryx with, with with the 6.5, and those are all you know animals that are are elk sized you know here in in North America. Don't hesitate, but to take enough gun, but be sure to take a gun that you shoot well. Nothing kills like accuracy. All of a sudden, the Red Hardy got bumped, <laughs> and there was a blazebok that somebody hunted. Well. You know, there were st we still had some lists to, to fulfill, and, and so then, yeah, the Blesbok was on there. The Blesbok, and then, and then the zebra. And then the zebra. Yes. Yeah. And then finally, uh, that all gets done. Now, now we're in that, to that last one on the list. The neighboring property, though, had some 
Red Hardies. Yeah, and we spotted them, and of course, where were they? They were at the top of the mountain, and where were we? We were at the bottom. That's how it works with us. We had to go up, not, not only go up, but we had to circle around, and we came back over the top. Yes. We came back over the top and just as we're, we're breaking the crest, and there they are. There they are with, with about 40 or 50 uh, cows with them that we, we couldn't see from down below. Yeah. And of course, like every other herd animal, there's all those pairs of eyes on you and that's what happens. So. Boom, they were gone. Boom, they were gone. <laughs> <laughs> Bulls in that group. <laughs> Never easy. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. Everything's wrong. Our pH is deserting us. <laughs> Married to the Hunt is brought to you by these fine sponsors. Argo Extreme Terrain Vehicles conquer any season, any terrain. See all the new models at your nearest dealer. Argo, go anywhere. Midland Radios help you stay in touch in the wild. Check out the new X Talkers at your nearest dealer. Communication for every adventure. Alberta Outdoorsman Magazine, Alberta's only hunting, fishing, and trapping magazine. Take your best to the best. J. Martin Taxidermy. Recreating the memories of your hunt with precision, passion, and pride. <laughs> <laughs> we got lucky, though. Uh, we, we, we were headed this way, and because that's where the whole herd had took off yeah. after and, and all of a sudden we looked that away and and here here's a, a lone bull all by itself yeah and i don't know whether he had been kicked out or whatever but um but there were a couple of other animals in there too there was some elan there yes. was some elan that were that were down below him but it, you know we were practically skylined your camera work was pretty interesting because you were you were sneaking so much and, and the <laughs> and it starts off with a lot of sky and then some tree on an angle and down to the <laughs> it's hilarious, but we we ended up getting getting the chance on on a on a great heart of beast. He's down. There he goes down. He's, He's down. down. He went down? Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. After all those chasing, waiting, and of course the, the first bu bunch we, we, we bust, there's there's 50 sets of eyes looking at us. Yeah, there's no ways. Yeah. There's an unhappy Elan over there, huh? What's making all the noise? I think it's that ought to be still. Could be that ought to be shit. Oh. Maybe. Cool. Anyway, was was uh, get, we had him down here, but he was facing us, and he jogged up and presented a much much yeah. nicer shot. <laughs> he even came a bit closer too. <laughs> <laughs> he was only he wasn't that bad for distance, uh, and he came up to. Oh, ten, 10 yards closer. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's go look. Okay, good deal. Good shot, hon. Oh, here we go. Beautiful. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, beautiful. He's old. He's old. Look at, look at how war his horns are. 
Here, let's just set that sideways. Look at that. Look at the, how smooth they are. You know, that's that's age there. That's age. Look at his ear. Look oh, and look at his ear. <laughs> it's, down, huh? it's got got it ripped up good. This is uh, th th this is usually what happens when they're by themselves, right? The, the old guys go. For yeah. The, no. the old guy goes. Let's see what his teeth look like. Ooh. Oh, look at that. He's hardly got teeth left. Look at. <laughs> That's perfect. That is perfect. We'll get him tilted up here so you can get, get a good look at him. Uh, but thank you, Clint. That was awesome. Fantastic shot. A good one. <laughs> well, it wasn't too far. <laughs> and a bit of pressure. <laughs> there we go. We got him up looking nice and pretty. He's an old animal, but he's in immaculate condition. Surprisingly, well, I think that the, the late rains we had this year kept him going well. He hasn't lost condition, pretty much tick free. I tell you, I, I really yeah. like it. I mean, they're a herd animal and their number one defense is to run. Yeah, they and good eyesight and just get out of there when they see you. I was amazed, you know, the, the hunt we were on yesterday, how far away they could see us. And they're looking yeah. right at you. They know it's you. They know it's you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, uh, their, their, their best defense is, is always to run, and, and these are actually amongst the, the fastest antelope on earth, right? Yes, yeah. Yeah, so when they take off running, they can go for a long time. <laughs> he's in great shape, um, classic shot. He's kind of like the zebra. He's got an aim point on him. He's got his own target. Yeah, a little back mark in the yeah. right spot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a 225-yard shot using my uh, Rocky Mountain rifle in uh, 260 Ackley, shooting the 143-grain Hornady ELDX, and man, that has been a hammer here on the plains of Africa. I want to thank you, Clint, you and, and Wild Horizon. Pleasure. This is about, you, you never give up. You, you never give up. I, I mean, we, up. we have been up. hunting so hard for these animals, and it's stock after stock, and because all of a sudden, it's not just a, a, a person out hunting with a pH, not, now there's a camera and everything else. And it gets pretty difficult. Lots of times, and sometimes I'm the one behind the camera. Today, Sandy's the one behind the camera, but it was, it's, you know, I can't see it, I can't see it, I can't see it. And, and I can just, I can hear him rolling his eyes, but he never says nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <Appreciate it. laughs>